Hello, this is me for Khan and in this video, I will tell you that how you can create giant frequency distribution. Uh, I have two images. The first image is of a cow and you can see this is a grayscale image with, uh, with uh, an object cow <coughs> and we have represented this image with a, a variable p. And this is another image uh, which we have represented with a variable q. And if you look into this image, this is a pattern. So we have to find the joint frequency distribution. These are the real images and we have to find a f of pq which should look like this. So, uh, so for the implementation, we have this uh, mathematical equation like the brightness pixel value is at p side and the image p is brighter so the brightness is at p side so we have this expression which we have to implement uh, i'm going to show you some more detail so the giant frequency distribution can be calculated through this expression <clears throat> this is f of p q into i of p i of q equal to summation sign and then this is a complete expression the i of p and i of q are the lowest uh, values of both images lowest pixel value of both images so this is the complete um, method which i will follow since i in order to show you the result i have already created the code for this and i have obtained the same result which was in the assignment so this is the image p this is q and this is the result now i will explain you that how i have created this code so i will guide you step by step the initial thing is that you have to create a clear all so that all the garbage here that the workspace should be clear when i will execute this line the workspace will get clear so there is nothing in the workspace i will close all the previous figures i will clear the command window here through this CLC so the command window is clear everything is uh, clean now I will uh, read the image one which is the image of a cow so I have loaded the image one into variable i1 if I show you that how i1 look like so I will use the im show command and you can see this is the same image which was in the assignment uh, and the name of this uh, variable which store this here is y1 but in the assignment the name of this image was p so the variable i2 store the pattern image and if i show you the how i2 look like then you can see that it is the same pattern which was uh, given to me so now I have to convert both of them into grayscale since they were uh, stored in the PNG format. It looked like they are grayscale but their format is PNG so th th there are three channels. If I show you this is the i1 image and the dimension of it is 160, uh, 1656 by 1700 pixels and there are three channels and this is unsigned integer um, data type so the same is uh, for the other image the dimension is slightly different from the first image 1680 cross 1696 by 3 so this is the same three channel image but the grayscale image is of one channel this is a three channel image so it is a png image now <clears throat> Since I have loaded both of these images, I will transform the first and second image into grayscale. Now, if you look into this, both images have been transformed. And you can see that the third uh, entity, which was representing the channel number, is finished. So it is a single channel image. The dimension is the same for both of these images. Since uh, you cannot process it with the expression which was given to me, through this expression, if I have to um, uh, if I have to 
uh, use this expression I will resize both of these images into the same dimension so I have chosen the 256 by 256 dimension so I will transform the first image into 256 by 256 and you can see that the image has uh, resized and you, if you look into this the second image is, has not been resized yet so when I execute this line of code it will resize the second image as well now you can see that the second image is also of a smaller size so uh, the next thing is to show both of these images in one uh, window so this is the first image I'm going to display it uh, now you can see that this is the first image image P and if I execute uh, the other line of code which is uh, the second line it will show me the second image as well so this is the first and second image and now um, we are going to find the minimum values which was IP and IQ in the uh, mathematical expression these are the IP and IQ this is the IP and IQ which have been used uh, here so I have to find a minimum value of uh, the first and second image and if you look into this the first image has the minimum value 1 the second image has a minimum value 0 <clears throat> now I have to subtract now uh, I have to subtract IP from the first image pixel values and IQ from the second image pixel values so the IPM stores uh, the uh, uh, this section and IQM store this section so this is the minimum values after the subtraction of minimum values since in, mer in mathematics when we use some summation in MATLAB we use for loop for this to implement uh, that summation so I have used two for loops because there are two summation signs so uh, the first uh, mm, you the first uh, uh, what we can say the first uh, loop execute for the maximum value of uh, i1 and the second loop execute for the maximum value of i2 and we have to find that if both of the um, uh, so it will uh, count uh, that how many uh, pixel IPM are similar to IQM like the if IPM is i this is uh, I think it should be 0 because it starts from 0 if the pixel value if the number total number of pixel values uh, at a specific position in the first image are <coughs> 0 pixel values and at the same position at the same coordinate at the same position in the second image there are also zeros then it mean that at that specific position uh, both image have zero zero value of the pixels so the total uh, count will be uh, stored in variable t and the sum of t will show me that how many uh, pixel value at that specific position which is i plus one and j plus one uh, this position uh, will be stored the value will be stored at that position so this is the complete implementation of this summation and the result which is the output result here is fpq but in my code it is out so the variable out is the same as uh, variable p in the mathematics so i will display the output here i will execute the loop and then i will show you the result at how it look like so this is the result and uh, you can see that the result is quite 100% similar to what was uh, asked within the assignment mm, if you look into this uh, assignment it was uh, they have asked us that to show us the result like this so I'm going to the assignment the result is this one and what my code has generated is look similar to that one so thank you so much uh, if you need the code of this uh, assignment of this work you can contact me uh, my contact is on my home page and i will uh, paste it in my description so stay tuned with me i will show you more videos more code and i will explain uh, more in detail 
um, uh, about uh, the image processing projects, the image processing assignments, and the code related to Python, PyTorch, Qt, C++. So you can contact me if you have any query. Thank you so much.